Copyright Disclaimer Under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Non-profit educational personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Viewer discretion is advised. And we're continuing to follow the fallout from the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. In the last hour, trading in several regional banks has been halted. And one of those banks is First Republic, which had received support over the weekend. So let's take a look at uh, the big board right now, see how the stock market is reacting. If that's a reaction to any of this, it's hard to tell. It's up just a little bit, um, but we'll keep watching throughout the day. In the meantime, let's bring in CBS News contributor Javier David. He is also the managing editor for business and markets for Axios. You can explain what has been going on since Friday <laughs> and just how significant is, is this? What is the significance of trading? Well, let's explain this. What's the significance of trading in these stocks being halted? The significance is it's indicative of a lot of volatility. And the sort of short answer that I have for you is, uh, it, it, the volatility itself is indicative of a lot of fear in the market, some of which is justified because you... Shalom, beloved brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike. Welcome. Thank you for being here. It is good to be here. Again, I'm not quite sure if this thing is going to record loud. I have a beat here I tested earlier. It didn't. Uh, well, I'll do the best that I can do to speak as close as I can to the microphone and make sure this thing is recorded. Uh, you might be able to see this, well, if you are members, you already see this a week before, and this video is being scheduled to be released on St. Patrick's Day, so to speak, this Friday, 17th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Times, and I recorded it today, uh, March the 13th, 2023, 5.22 p.m. So whatever happened, I'm down for the time. I'm just release, releasing video and I'm just taking a break. That's all. After the fast, we took a break, beloved. Although because I'm in my break, I don't go live and pray. I still pray, do my research and read and make sure I got those things for the nation to keep their eyes open, uh, to keep their wisdom amplify and the knowledge increase. Now, beloved, uh, I mean, all of you, you already know what's going on here. You already know what's happening there. However, one thing that I always want to point out, or I've always been pointing out, or we've always been pointing this thing out. Anytime, beloved, there is something really, really bad happen to those people. Who do they put in front to explain that? Who? Do they put in front of everybody to explain this mess to clean it up? Who they brought as expert now? Now, all suddenly, our people, we are expert now. This is the guy that they call. I have no idea what this guy is. Javier, he, of course, his name is David or David. Of course, the house of David, they, they have to put somebody that look like us. I'm not, I don't know if the brother is one of us. I'm simply saying every single time there is a massive MS. One of them did this. They brought one of us to say, okay, how, how is it out there? Remember the whole Colorado Superior fire? Who did they bought a bunch of unknown Negroes? This is the first time I, I, I see those people. I, I, wait, who are those people? But that's what they put in there. They, they want to give you the impression that this is your fault. You are part of it too. You are being affected too. And they got this fellow over there, you know, uh, talking about it. Black uh, Professor Black Truth made an excellent video today. I would highly recommend that you watch the video. Okay, he, he literally come out there and said, our people are not going to be affected by this, not directly. Some of us will, but majority of our people, we have no hands on this. Okay, we must stay out of this okay let me let this play 
and then I'll put uh, one of our oops okay this thing uh, okay well this thing don't want to play all right well let's let I was gonna put my my favorite beats over there. one of my one of our favorite beats some of you may remember that beat uh, oops no that's not it <sighs> why this thing okay Okay, you know what? Let's let this dude talk. You just had basically three banks over the last three days uh, go under um, in some form of fashion or get taken over. Uh, the market is just very fearful and investors have a way in an environment where there's a lot of uncertainty. You don't kind of quite know where the next disaster is going to come from. They kind of shoot first, ask questions later, start selling everything. And right now, the focus of that selling is regional banks. People mm. are mistrustful about uh, what is being done with their money or whether they're going to be able to access their money. Uh, we, the, What we're seeing in markets is, um, I guess, and for lack of a better term, speculation. Uh, the market is acting on fears, but we again, we just kind of don't know how much of what is happening in terms of these stock prices and the volatility and the very sharp declines that we're seeing is translating into people actually physically trying to remove their money from banks or having difficulty doing so. Javier, we heard the president talk, speak about two hours ago, giving remarks on this Silicon Valley Bank issue. Uh, what have what the reactions been across the board and of the federal government over the weekend? Yeah, I mean, uh, basically what we saw yesterday and what we heard from uh, President Biden today is in an effort to kind of reassure Americans that the banking system is stable. What the biggest fear is and, and kind of what an expo the exponent of all of these socks telling on. Again, when things like that happen, of course, they are going to bring the Negro there, you know, just sitting there, explain this mess and uh, call up the name of Biden and do all those stuff to make sure that uh, black folks, you know, just uh, be cool. This thing is not affecting us. It's affecting you. That's why we have this Negro over there. And that's not the first time they've done this, version. okay? They do that as a form of intimidation. They do that as a form of uh, mind control, if you wish. For lack of a better term, they do this as a subconscious message to send unto you out there. Every time they have bad news, they call one of our people and put it there. Anytime they need, they got good news, who they call? Uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Elon Musk, uh, who else they have? What, what, what other scumbag they have out there? Uh, they, they, they're Warren Buffett, okay? So you see, they don't call those guys, okay? They don't ask them, hey, hey, why this thing happened? No, they ask a bunch of Negroes. And then when this thing pick up, and then they will say, oh, Robert Kiyosaki or that other fellow, uh, Ryan Buffett or uh, uh, the Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, and uh, those are the guys that say this thing was going to get good. Now it get good. How do you feel about this? Oh, I feel, I feel really proud because I always predicted da, 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 da. But when the thing is not good, who do they put there? Mr. David, Javier, somebody that looked like us. Is he one of us? I don't know. All I know, our people are very emotional, okay? Uh, they will find a way to blame this on so-called black people, which that's not who we are, okay? I'm not going to go into this, but that's not who we are. We are the children of the light, the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible, the children of God. This is who we are, okay? Now, I'm not going to take no more of this thing. Let's move. Is that thing even recording right now? Is it? Oh, yes, it is. Yes, yes. Let's move to the next video. We, we're good with this fellow right there, okay? All right, then. Let's see. L earlier, earlier, I was watching this video on... What is it? Uh, mm, I think it's... What's... Oh, well, see, this is what they put there. That has nothing to do with this, man. It has nothing to do with that. But anyway, that was Ruder's. So, um, of course, usually Wooders, they turn off their, their, their whatever, their, their, their comment board. So, I was watching there, and then look at the people that are there. Look at them. Okay? This usually, we are not here. Okay? We are not here. 
All right. Okay. Silicon Valley Bank. Is that is that in Le Okay, let me see. Uh is that in California? It should be in California, right? Should be in California. Where is a Silicon Valley Bank located at? Yeah, California. Silicon, California. Yeah. Here is information from Wikipedia. Santa Clara. Oh. Huh. Okay, I left my water outside. There you go. Now, there you go. Okay, you scroll up. You scroll down. The close-up, we are not in here. You can see the so-called Moabite, Hamonite, Edomite, Ishmaelite, the Hittite, the Hivite. All of them are here, but we are not here. There's a security guard over here. Usually he's one of our people, you know, but as you can clearly see, this is not one of us. Now, one fun fact, a sister brought into me. Let me double check this before I... Before I say this because the sister was sharing some knowledge uh, within me and we were just having a holy wisdom communion and uh, he brought on to me silicon valley bank foundation okay. hmm. Hmm. i guess we have to take we have to take wikipedia uh, Bank of America put something here. Our commitment to support and strengthen Silicon Valley. Uh, anyway, so let's take Silicon Valley Bank Wiki. Let's take Wikipedia. A very reliable source of information. Okay, all right. Now, the Silicon... <coughs> excuse me. The Silicon Valley was founded in 19... On October 17th, 1983... 39 years ago which is uh, that's that's when they officially went on business of, of october 17 but they were founded in 1983 so 1983 it collapsed in 2023 okay defunct don't be defunct mean there there's there there's there's no psychedelic funk here man where well, james brown is not in the miss here good god there's no defunct here man it collapsed it, it just it just died belly up that's the proper name okay in 2023 1983 let's do a little math here see what's going on with the people 1983 minus 2023 1983 minus 2023 is minus 40 okay 1983 to 2023 it's 40 years of a banking what did we just finish completed when this thing collapsed on our last day? You can't make this up. <laughs> you can't. Woo. Uh. Yeah. You can't make this up. Make this up. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. Stay, stay out of it. Stay out of it. Stay, stay out of it. 1983, 2003, 1983, 2023. 40 years, 40 years in business. 40 days, 40 days, 40 days fasting. And our last day, Silicon Valley for an hour. Where my people like stay out of it, 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 stay out of
We uh, communicate all the time. Sister Rita from California. She lives over there uh, in California. Oh, let me just pass this on from Sister Sister Rita, okay? She, um, uh, her name is uh, Sister Rita in California. And she said she had a dream that the Mighty One said for every single one of us to have the aloe plant. Okay, the aloe vera, okay? Uh, let me see if I can get a picture or oh, aloe aloe vera plant okay here's a summary from medical news today it also covers some of the risks associated with use it contains healthful plant compounds it has antioxidant and antibacterial properties it accelerates wound healing it reduces dental plaque it helps treat canker sores and more all right so that's aloe vera all right the sister says she had the dream the mighty one say every single one of us should get an aloe vera plant uh we had that before we had uh, stated this before two years ago 2021 we all had it the people that have it i had one because of the maintenance came in you know living in an apartment i had to throw it away so i'm gonna buy another one just have it and put it in your home okay the sister says something is coming okay she say i was just dreaming i just woke up to tell you our nation to go aloe plant aloe vera plant okay at your house in a pot or not in the ground even at your apartment outside sickness is come it's coming this one powerful plant be known see i have been using this for a long time this is my picture the sister sent a picture in her contact her email address i will give the phone i will keep in case you want to talk to the sister you may request the phone uh, by email you email big Levi, but her email is rita g5210 at gmail.com so if you have any question uh, let me see if i can type the email over there rita g 5210 at gmail.com but that is yeah uh rita five rita g 52 uh 10 at gmail.com if you have any question you can contact the sister she's the one that shared the knowledge with me uh 40 years 40 years and now 40 day fast this thing is done silicon valley is so collapsed belly up all right, beloved, let us keep on moving. Let's see what the mighty one have in store for us. Now, let's keep on talking about this thing, right? How long we are into this thing? Ooh, all right, then. Good Lord. Anyway, so uh, when you look at the Silicon Valley, of course, this is a pyramid that they put on its side, make it look like some kind of arrow that pointed go to the right. But uh, I haven't. Uh, no, I don't want. I don't want to go in like in the whole thing about silicon. You know, people should have seen this. Okay, they're just mocking those people over there. This is the name. Oh, let's stop this thing right quick. All right, this is the name of the bank right there, Silicon. No, I, I, I you people are not getting this. You silly con. You silly have been con. You silly little monkey have been con. Con. K A N C F the Hebrew is I like. Con. C F Donald Trump. You silly have been con in the valley of. I cannot say it. But it's in Psalm 23 when we walk upon this valley. We walk with our staff and our rod. But you people have been conned because you are silly. <coughs> yeah. You can't make this up. You can't. Silly little monkey have been conned in the valley of the black judge give the mighty one great praise great glory beloved okay now i don't want to go into the whole thing and stuff like is that aloe vera plant over there is that what that is or snake plant it looked like snake plant to me is that what that is snake plant i uh, is it 
Is it things? There's a lot of stuff here I can go into, but I will just wasting my time and your time. But anyway, let's uh well they don't give any close up at the end. But those people are going in one by one, withdrawing their money. Okay, because this thing collapsed. All right, there is a close-up right here. Let's enlarge this. Let's see what's going on here. All right, they come with their little tent things, put it out there. Mostly, again, you see this the so-called Moabites uh, or Ammonites, we just assume. Uh, 83, the Edomite, the, the Ishmaelite, because that's where they have their money, okay? And those people don't bank where you bank things, all right? And it's all over with 250 right here. You know what to do, okay? All right? Let me see if we can get any more close up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, that's another close up right here. All right. So mostly you can see them. Those are not typically, those are not our people. Okay. I'm not saying we are not, we do not have things in there and stuff, but mostly the people that are affected by this thing are the people that hoarded everything okay those are the people that hoarded everything all right they go over there and take the money out because this thing is belly up all right um let's see there's a security guard over here is that what that is security guard a police officer or a security guard but anyway so that's what's going on in silly little monkey got con in the valley of the black george all right then bridging let's keep on moving beloved let's keep on moving all right mm -hmm. now let's bring in errol barnett he is okay. outside a silicon valley bank location in santa clara california errol good to see you i know this morning when we spoke a little bit there were a handful of people lined up waiting for the bank to open i'm not sure if it's open yet it's about 8 a.m there what are you seeing what are you hearing from customers hey there nikki and Anne marie great to see you both that's right outside the head again who did they sent over there who did they have they could have sent anyone there i mean this is freaking cbs son they could have sent anyone over there yet they put some dude that looked like us of course because of the because of the situation, we just say he's one of us, but he's not, okay? Because of the video we are making, he's one of us, okay? But let's let's listen to the fellow, okay? Headquarters here in Santa more. Clara, the line of customers eager to access their funds has only grown. And I just want to point out to you, part of their frustration right now, while they're welcoming the news from the government over the weekend, is that the communication from the company, since it failed, has effectively been nil. They can't use their two-factor authentication to access the online accounts. And when they come to the front door, they see a message posted to the glass window, which is simply an announcement from over the weekend that the government is taking over. I can step aside and show you just some of the people who are in line. I've, I can count now maybe eight different customers um, who are here. I spoke with one of them, a founder and CEO of a company that has millions. Um, in some cases, these folks have tens of millions of dollars effectively behind that door. Um, his company is called Strong Compute, which uses artificial intelligence and algorithms to help doctors and hospitals create imagery so they can cure disease. Um, he's frustrated that this bank was effectively playing fast and loose with money um, but he's thankful that president biden said they should have access to their cash and the leadership will be held accountable but amory and nikki the customers i've been speaking with don't know exactly what that means so the bank opens um, in less than an hour and they will literally try to walk inside and find out discover how many of their employees they can pay, how much money they'll have access to. Um, and some of these are new startups, but there are also customers of this bank like Roku. Many viewers may be streaming um, this programming on a Roku device. Okay, so, all right, Roku. Many of the clients, so to speak, of this thing, they are big business. Okay, Roku. Some of you are watching this. You are watching it on Roku. Okay, the TV. A good brain, a nice brain, cheap brain. Good stuff. A lot of our people are streaming in there. They had their banking things with them. And uh, yeah, 
Biden already said no losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Yeah, right. Biden, Mr. Biden, sir, how's your boy doing? Voldemir, Vlalinsky, is that, is that what that is? Zelensky, Bilinsky. You see, you people have money to give for war within a heartbeat. It, it, it wouldn't even take one day if that Zelensky fellow say, hey, we need two, three, ten billion dollars, right there and there. You see, now those other rich folks, of course, they need that money. These things like that, it shouldn't never happen. You know what happened here, Regin? Those guys, according to Professor Black Truth, you might want to go ahead and watch the video, but of course, I'll add this in it. Before things like that happen, they know. You see, the bank is not, they don't sit on your money when you put your money in the bank. They don't. It's not like the money is in the bank. They invested. If they make money, your money is still there. They make more money. If they lost, they don't lose. You think Silicon Valley lose? That's why they call themselves Silicon. They con you, silly. You lost. They still win. Of course, they will never disclose the figure that they, they have ripped and profit. Okay? The money that you put in there, they took this money, they invested, they make way more money, they stack that up, they still keep put the money in there, and then they are charging you interest. Before things like that happen, they went to the government, they say, hey, we're about to fall, you know, help us out. You know, they... If this, if this bank was in Ukraine, this thing, bro, come on, man. Now, when it come to help your own fellow elite, your own fellow 83, you let them down. Why? Because you know damn well that Genesis 15, verse 13, which said, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger and a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. 16, 19, 20, 19, 16, 17, 20, 17, 16, 18, 20, 18, however you want to put it there, 400 years is here. It is done. You can see the evidence is all over. 83 is in trouble. This is not Jacob's trouble. This is Esau's trouble. You can see them. They are dismayed. They are in great fear. There's a lot, excuse me, there's a lot of fear, a lot of tremblings upon their loin. And guess what? And that, and also, that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. How the mighty ones going to judge this nation? With the so-called, the black judge, with the so-called angels. Listen, this thing fall, fell on the 12th. On the 7th, which was Tuesday, okay, which was the quote-unquote, the day of Purim, if this is what that is, and the full moon, that's when Shabbatai officially got into the house of Pisces, the house of the hunter, and then five days later, and daylight saving, okay, that's how we ended the fast on the 12th, we usually end the fast on, on the 11th, okay, that's when it's officially end, but symbolically, we ended it on the 12th, daylight saving, they know what they are doing when they say daylight saving and stuff like that, okay, this is very significant for, for us, there's a lot of energy, so this thing collapsed, I'm not quite sure when that thing collapsed, was it before uh, the march it could have collapsed on on tuesday on on the day the shabbatai got in there or after shabbatai got in there but anyway you are being judged because the mighty one is in the midst this thing is up and that's why the 400 is done this is the source trouble and 83 trouble that's what you got all those things going on out there biden the government is not bailing you out and i just read a comment oh uh, I just read a comment. It was pretty. It was pretty good comment. Somebody in in Minnesota somewhere, uh, he he heard about this and then he quickly went to the bank. He withdraw all his money over in, in in Minnesota, and the bank teller told him, "Why why are you withdrawing all your money?" He told the bank teller, "That's none of your business." And he said, "But if you must know, it's because Biden made the de declaration saying." everything's gonna be all right and he know it's not gonna be all right now to all people bridge whether you withdraw your money you don't withdraw it it, it doesn't matter to me but that's how we've been having this five dollar challenge uh for the past two two years 
okay some of you are pretty well like hey you collapse you don't collapse i don't give a crap that's why it is always important to have a certain uh, cash is king okay you have certain real bread in the house not not digital bread the actual bread you get in the house you don't trust people to invest your money like that if you know if you do not if you do not know the cat you don't let him invest your money man i believe i was speaking of no no master p uh, let me see if i can get this interview about master p okay master p was saying something oh hey hey hey, hey go why bet kiosk like you over there all right yeah, all right so master p and kevin garnett okay all right uh boy i don't want to play this master p tells how kevin garnett lost 77 million dollar to guys in suit Oh uh, boy, Los Angeles. Let me see if uh, if this thing has if it has if if it has music, I will not play it. Let me pause this and see what's going on here. Okay, it doesn't have any money. Let's listen to what Master P is saying here. Okay. At the least, I'm gonna give you some free game today. But the next time it's gonna cost you at least 100 G's. I was reading this story about Kevin Garnett losing 77 million dollars. I live right up the street from this guy. Never spoke to him. We never sit down and talked about nothing. But this is what I'm going to tell y'all. Your financial advisors or accountants, you only have one. Imagine if you got that type of money. You should at least have three, four, or five of them where they can check on each other. And you won't lose that type of money. I mean, you guys can lose that type of money. Come to the hood, man. Give $10,000. Help the kids. Do something. Give back. Y'all don't even do that no more. I did. I got the hookup movie. And I told a couple basketball players, man, let's put some money in and let's do this movie and let's make some money. Talking about making investment. You guys don't even do this. You don't have any time for nothing but just basketball. I hear basketball players tell me, man, basketball is my life. But you're going to get older. You know, your body is not going to be able to jump and run the way you do forever. That's One true. thing I like about LeBron James, he put his people on. He educated people. Y'all need to learn some economics. Instead of just basketball, I'm gonna teach that to my kids that you're not gonna just play basketball. You're not Again, beloved Master P is also a rapper. He actually played for the NBA. Okay, he's a basketball player. Master P has a. You know what? Hang on over there. Let, let's just double check Master P. Why Creek? Forgive me, Bridget. You know we do this all the time. Master P. Okay. Master P. Let's see who Master P is. Born in April, uh, April 29, 1970. Okay. Uh, what is Master P? Uh, April what? He was born in April 29, 1970. He's 52 years old. What day was April 29, 1970? April 29th, 1970 fell on a Wednesday. So Master P is what you know as a Cocavite, okay? All right, he's a Cocavite, all right? So, whoops. Oh, crap. Oh, man. I already forgot where I was with this thing. Let me just stop it right here. Is that what that is? Okay. Master P is a Cocavite. Of course, the Cocavites are street smart. Okay. They, those are the Negroes. Those are the group of people, the intellects. They just naturally, they are smart. They, they, are, they have a lot of intellectual. They really don't need to go to school to learn things. Okay. This is Master P. This is what Master P is. He's a Cocavite. Okay. He was born under the influence of the planet Mercury. Okay, he's a street smart dude. He's smart everywhere. He know what he's talking about. He's know what he's doing. He's an intellect. All right. Now, April 29th, Zodiac. Taurus. According to InStyle, those born between April 20th and May 20th can likely assume their sun sign is Taurus. All right. So he was, he's a Cocavite, which was born in the house of Taurus. He's extremely smart and extremely strong. And his element is earth. All right? The element of riches. Okay? Every, everything, earth has all the three elements in there. Okay? So now we identify 
what Master P is and his element. And then let's listen to what he has to say because he know his stuff. All right? All right, then. Not just going to be athletes or entertainers. You're going to know something about economics and you're going to have an education. And it's sad because when I was doing that movie, these people that I know, they tell me, you know, I got to get this paperwork to my financial advisor, my accountants. For what? You can't even give your own money to people that have been there for you. That's crazy. And they want to divide and conquer us because they don't want you to be smarter. They don't definitely don't want you to be around nobody that's going to teach yourself. So I'm telling y'all, economics, learning with basketball, you'll be able to invest, you'll be able to buy things, and that's real game. Next time we sit down, this is going to have to cost some money because y'all giving them money. You know what you say? They, they take 5% of $200 million. How much you gave somebody that you don't even know or somebody hooked you up with that person? He, this is very this is very important there see our people they will pay guys in suit especially if that person like well, i'm ish i'm good with money oh ish is really good with money they want all the property hey human 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 they will pay hundreds of millions of dollars hundreds of thousands thousands hundreds of dollars to those guys to tell them things and you got people like master b that will come and say man let me lay some game on you and stuff like that but it's gonna cost you they don't want to do this. That's why a lot of people are, are complaining because we don't study live. We charge minimum $4 a month. You know how much $4 a month is? It's $3.99 a month. Okay? 30 divided by $3.99. Oh, what is that? What that is? 30 divided by 399 is approximately 0.08. 30 divided by 4 is 7.5. No, uh, no, it's the other way. I mean, I mean, I meant to say 4 divided by 30. 4 divided by 30. 4 divided by 30 is approximately 0 0.13. You're paying 13 cents a day to learn a bunch of things that you would pay millions of dollars. And that's like the lowest. $9.99, 10 bucks. Uh, let me see. 10 divided by 30. 30 10 cents. divided by 30 is approximately 0 0.33. Okay. 30 days to learn, to study, to get good stuff. And our people, it's a, it's a problem. People will send you email. Oh, you are selling the words and stuff like that. That's the same thing they told my stuff. You, you don't know what you're saying. Yet they will go to those guys and pay. Is that thing even recording right now? Is it recording? Because last time it did. Okay, all right. It is. It is. They don't want to pay him. I mean, if you want some game, dog, I charge 100 Gs. You lost $77 million. Do you know how much $77 million is? And guy in suit. Oh, when Master B was making that movie, okay? I got the hookup. Okay. I got the hookup. All right, with Master P. Okay, Master P did a lot. Okay, our people don't make movies anymore. Okay, we make nothing but cowboys movie and drama and all this nonsense. Okay, the hookup. That, that's when phone, back when Master P made this movie, okay, cell phone was the hish. Okay, he made this movie. He The, the guy, he, this is what I call true coca vibe, man. He's a basketball player, mus music producer, rapper. Uh, NBA basketball uh, 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 player, okay? A writer, let me see. He's a movie producer. <coughs> Excuse me, producer. Of course, they're going to give our people movie too. Two stars. That's why we told our people, get into movie, make movie for our people, okay? All right? Uh, written by, he's a writer, okay? He wrote the movie, okay? Percy Robert Miller Sr., okay? Also, know, also known as Master P, all right? So... The movie came out in 1998, okay? Uh, the budget was $3 million. He made $10 million. <laughs> a $3 million budget, he made $10 million. He paid whatever that $3 million back, seven point whatever million is on his pocket, okay? All right? Okay, starring Master P, okay? Produced by Master P, and those are the producers. Those are the people that really get the money. Andrew Shack, Brian Turner, uh, Jonathan, Ura, Leroy, Douglas, Master P. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Uh, six mil- it got $7 million. $7 million left divided by six. Everybody get at least a million dollar, $1.2 million in profit. $1.2 million in profit, man. That was back in 1998. Okay, that's what that's what Master P was doing. So he know his stuff, you know, when he's talking about things like that. All right, but Kevin Garnett didn't listen to him. So you done gave them over 10, 15, 20 million dollars, and you can't even help your own people. That's embarrassing. That's why a lot of these athletes entertaining talking about they depressed. Depressed and rich do not mix. If you're depressed and you're rich, you got a problem. There's a problem. There's something deep in the rules out here. Athletes, entertainers, mm-hmm. basketball players. I even heard Paul Pierce say that. I was like, man, what's wrong, dog? Let's get it together, man. Put that faith and trust in God, man. Y'all putting in too many people because they got a suit on. Yeah. Yo, yo, it's a sad time and we're losing too many young people to drugs. I mean, doing drugs is not cool. He recently lost his daughter, okay? His daughter OD, all right? And of course, man, we're not gonna give Master P a pass, you know. Master P is one of my favorite rappers. He founded No Limit. The guy is a true Kokavite, man. If you follow Master P, when he made, when he founded No Limit, he went to one of those white Jewish men. He come up with the brand. They offer him one million, one million dollar, I believe, for it. They offer him two, two or three hundred thousand dollar for the brand for the whole thing, and he said no. And the airplane back with his uh, brother. The brother said, well, man, why didn't you sell it? He said, if this rich white man, something to that effect, say, if this rich white man can offer us 300 million, 300,000 or $1 million for this brand, how much do I truly worth? I know those people don't give a crap about me, but how much I can truly make? And then he went out there, he make hundreds of millions of dollars, man. You got to respect this, man. But of course, Master P got his hand on the whole drug things because his music, <laughs> Master P music, yeah, man. You know his brother, you know CM, he's not, he's not, he's, he's not known as C Murder anymore. CM is there, but anyway, let's let's watch the whole thing. Parents, stop smoking weed with your kids out the gate. Nothing cool about that. You know, if you got to do something, go do that in another room or something. But and kids, stop being daredevils. I mean, we look at Mac Miller in life. R.I.P. to him, but man, his life is going to be example to it. Again, like a lot of those guys become wise now. I, I'm not saying because they got the money. Bridget, we don't do this thing about worshiping celebrities, but a lot of the two third right now, they they are getting their game up. Okay, they kind of eh, they make a 180 turn. All right, they getting their hitch together. Okay, everybody else that's living. Everybody in the hip hop game, you know, doing lean and pills and stuff like that. That ain't cool. And then somebody saying they depressed behind girls. I mean, if you put your trust in God, ain't no girl you got to be depressed after. You know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect. None of us perfect. But if you look at our life, don't make the mistakes that we made. I had people in my family that was doing drugs, and that would make me don't want to do it. Okay, there's music there. So, anyway. All right, so Master P was talking about uh, Kevin Garnett lo- losing seventy-seven million dollars in suit. So those guys, they were very beloved seventy-seven million dollars. It's a lot of money, man, to give to a bunch of dudes that just sit over around wearing suit, and then they lost your money. Okay, that's what happened when those things, uh, when those Silicon whatever Valley dudes lost money. Again, those guys just came in and tell you, "Hey, we lost all your money." Okay, you don't trust those people like that with your money, man. Of course, I'm not going to tell our people, hey, put all your faith in your money, but that's not what that is. You don't trust H, you don't trust 83 with your money, point blank, period. You don't trust it. You can invest your money in your own sales. You starting buying books, that's the biggest investment you can make. Studying initiation into hermetic is probably the greatest investment you can make in your life. You meditating, meditating on life, controlling and mastering the four element, you have made an incredible investment. How much did that cost you? I don't know. A couple hundred bucks. The books you've been buying, and it's a lot, man. It's a lot of investment. Okay? So our people are not, they, when it, whenever it's come to education, they don't like that. They don't like to buy books anywhere, studying and stuff like that. They like to give people money and then so, them, so they can multiply the money, uh, amplify the money. Okay. Hey, guy in suit, Hish, 
Here, ten million dollar, bring me back a hundred million. That guy came out and did say, "Well, Silicon Valley failed, stuff like that." That's what they do. Okay, now let's go back to Roku. Also, Etsy, a popular website many people use. Um, and so there are still some open questions. They want to know how much money they'll have access to and when. They also don't know what it really means for the CEO and the leadership. That's what it is. They don't really know what's going on. All they know, this thing collapsed. If something collapsed, that means the money is not there. Of course, they will try to make it look good. Say, oh, well, the government give bail them out and stuff. They are doing well. They are doing well. And the next thing you know, you're going to have a lot of 988. A lot of it, all right? Let's take one more minute out of this. Of this bank to be held accountable. One woman telling me, uh, she's from Australia, that in Australia, when a CEO is held accountable, it means they see the inside of a jail cell. So a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty, and for all of these folks and their employees, this is not over yet. So, I mean, did anyone say that once they get in there, they just want to pull their money out, that they're ready to look for another bank or maybe a more mainstream bank alternative. I mean, the one thing about this bank is that they were willing to open their doors to startups who don't have a lot of money, who don't have a lot of equity, they don't have credit, um, but they were willing to support these, um, you know, sort of cutting edge new platforms. Um, so has anybody said they're, they're done with it, they want to go more mainstream? We don't care. So let's keep on moving to the next. Of course, they have some kind of weird women look like one of our women. The white women stay silent. Some black dude looking like us over there, you know, symbolically. Anyway. CNN's chief business correspondent, Christine Romans, is here with us. Christine, okay, if you weren't paying attention on Friday afternoon, you were off work or on a trip, Break down exactly what happened here with SBB. The anatomy of a collapse of a big bank and the anatomy of a rescue from the federal government. Let's look at how we got here. First of all, what is SVB? It is the epicenter of tech startups, venture capital, Silicon Valley Bank. It is the 16th largest bank, or it was, in the United States. And this is really uh, the, the oxygen for technology, the technology sector, really goes through uh, SVB. So a very important uh, bank here. By the end of 2022, it had $175 billion in total deposits. And here is the anatomy of the bank run, right? This is how much money it had at the end of the year. Just on Thursday, there were $42 billion in withdrawals from depositors, right? So something happened here where people wanted to take their money out and this bank... Uh, Forty-two billion dollars is no joke, man. That's like, that's like the biggest, mightiest, holiest trash can lid right upside your head. That's like, I don't know who did. Well, of course we know who did this. I mean, from forty-eight hours, four plus eight, you know what to do. But forty-two billion, man, within withdraw. Is that what that is? I, I don't know. I wasn't truly listening. I was on my phone. But anyway. Unraveled here. So what happened? Why did they get there? Well, this is a company that for years took deposits in the good times when interest rates were very low. And it grew and grew and grew. And those deposits grew. And it put that money into long-dated treasuries, into treasuries. Safe, super safe uh, treasuries, right? So this is how much they had. At the uh, end of 2022, $128 billion uh, worth of of treasury. Look, that is amazing how much it, it gained. But then as things started to go south, when interest rates were rising, those were less valuable. And the company actually was selling those treasuries at a loss. When that word got out, people got nervous. The stock in the bank started to decline. Depositors started to withdraw their, uh, their money. They were also withdrawing their money because technology, that sector, was in a downturn, right? And so instead of putting money into the bank, uh, depositors were taking money out of the bank. All right, let, let me just cut to this garbage here. Listen, that has nothing to do with technology. Believe it or not, Bridging, technology is doing so great. Chat, GPT, Midjourney, Dali, all those things are doing great. Technology is moving so fast. Your next... I don't even know what the next iPhone is going to do. I have I have the iPhone 12. The sister sent to me. Bless the beloved sister. God bless the sister. Thank you so much. You know, and I have another Android. The technology and those things are moving so fast. The technology we use to create the art are moving so fast. All those technology are moving, that has nothing to do with that. That has everything to do with the mighty one saying enough. He's breaking down your economy. 
uh, we did warn you when Mr. Jimmy Carter announced that he was going to stay at home and us peace, okay? He could possibly be the last head of the ego, okay? There's the three egos head in the, the, the book of Esdras and, uh, and the in the book of well they don't accept this book in the um in the bible they remove it the apocrypha okay you got the three-headed of the ego uh, the vatican the united states and england okay the vatican the pope mr uh, benedict the true pope he is no more one head of the ego uh, the queen the head of the financial that's why he, she's no more that's why you got those all financial crisis things going on and you got uh, Mr. Jimmy Carter, possibly could be the last head. That's what we're waiting to be gone symbolically. And that's it. Okay, that has nothing to do with tech and technology or anything. It's just the blessing is over. That's all. My name is Lieutenant Patrick Welch. I am the, the, the lieutenant over the Violent Crimes Detective Division here at the High Point Police Department. Uh, not to reiterate the timeline, I think most of that has been pretty well established. Uh, I do want to say that the investigation is moving forward uh, very well and expeditiously. Um, we have been in contact with the affected family uh, and they are cooperating with us fully. Um, and as the chief said, there is some information that we are going to hold back. Um, that's just to protect the integrity of the investigation. Uh, but at this time, I am uh, at a point where uh, we can announce that the offender uh, and one of the deceased, Robert Jeffrey Creighton, is being looked at as the primary uh, person who committed this act. We will also release, and I think it's been put out in the, pre the updated press release, uh, his wife, uh, Athalia Creighton, age 46, and one of the children. Uh, She's 46 years old, okay? This is uh, 988, because that's what's going to follow, Bridget. You don't lose billions of dollars like this. Well, at least the Gentiles. You don't lose billion dollars like this and then you just, life goes on. You're going to make them again. You think you can make, well, like a guy like Kevin Garnett. You think you can make $77 million again? Like Master P said, man, you playing football like this. You, it's gonna, you know, there, there, there's a limit to this. I mean, basketball. Your body can only take this to... Mm, certain degree. All right, this is a 988 here. Uh, Kasin Creighton, age 18. And the press okay. release said that two other people inside the home escaped. Were they related to the victims? That is correct. Uh, we aren't going to release their names at this time. Um, two surviving victims did, did escape the residence. Uh, one of them is a direct relation and the other was an acquaintance. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you release as to how they were murdered? Was this gunshot, stabbing, uh, strangulation? Yes, uh, I can release that um, the deceased did die of gunfire. Yes, sir. Um, so the the two kids ran out of the house um, around 7 a.m., but do you know what time the incident actually occurred? Did they find them when they woke up? Did it happen a long time before that, or did it happen? It so happened concurrently around. Okay, so that's a, um, a 9 and 8 that happened over there, okay? High point, um, man suspect killing his wife and three children who are self involuntary uh, um, commit, uh, a mental commitment on January 3rd. They always want to make this thing look like, hey, it's a mental health, mental health. That's not what that is. The blessing is done and the demons are out there. A hey, time to pay this hate, man. And right now we have an update about a shooting that took place yesterday on Piccadilly Avenue. Now the victim was found lying on the sidewalk, suffering from uh, puncture wounds. EMS responded, pronouncing the victim dead at the scene. The suspect was identified shortly after 4.20 p.m. Officers received a call about a suspicious vehicle that was parked in the rear of the 6900 block of Sutherland. Officers found a deceased male inside the vehicle. He had died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Again, a lot of, a lot of MS and a lot of 988. All right, let's keep on moving. A prayer service will be held tonight in Roxbury, New Jersey, where the community is mourning the loss of a local family. The service is for the Ventricelli family. Uh, the Morris County prosecutor says 57-year-old Peter Ventricelli shot and killed his 58-year-old wife, Kelly, and their 15-year-old son, Anthony. Before 
Okay, this fellow, he's, you know, 57, 5 plus 7. You know what to do. His house is number 37. You know who did this. Everything is in there. Do your thing. Or taking his own life. The service will get underway at 7 p.m. at St. Teresa's Church, Catholic Church on Main Street. Catholic Church. The Catholic Church. We made a few changes. Hope, where the Baldwin County Sheriff's Office is investigating an apparent murder-suicide after two bodies, a man and a woman, were found at Bohemian Park. That discovery made by a visitor at the park located off County Road 48 and Langford Road. We're told investigators found a note and a gun on scene indicating a planned murder-suicide. No names have been released at this time. Okay, uh, that was two, one day ago? Do they have any? Let's see what they have. If they have any update, was a, a day ago. Mm -hmm. See what's happening there. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. I don't think they have any any update. Hmm. 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 Okay, no update yet, but this is uh, the MS happened a day ago, so let's keep on moving. I mean, 988. Yeah, yeah, I understand, man. Wait, 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 hang on. What is this? Oh. Oh, okay, all right. We are learning more about this couple. They shared two kids together, including a one-year-old that was there at the time of the shooting. Sources tell us there were some domestic issues between them, but nothing to suggest a murder-suicide is how this would end. Since this has happened, I've discarded every document that we have involving the officers, and uh, nothing, nothing jumps out at you at all. Uh, model officers, no, no issues. 22-year-old Maria Martin and Matthew Effington with Detroit police for less than four years discovered dead Sunday at their condo in Livonia at Six Mile and Farmington. Police there calling this a murder-suicide. 26-year-old Effington apparently shot his former girlfriend multiple times before pulling the trigger on himself. Police officers are regular people and they have problems and they have you know they need help like like anyone else no they don't they don't have problem like regular people that's a lie you people came in back in the 80s Reaganomics uh, with Bill Clinton like you you guys were superheroes you know uh, police officers are not like regular people okay they got like they got tough job to do they got all suddenly now the uh, police officers are like regular people and stuff they need support. They get in it help and stuff. That's not what you guys were seeing in the 80s and 90s. When I, when you guys were heavily upon our people, destroying our people, okay? So, of course, they're going to say, oh, well, you know, it doesn't look like you, therefore it could be you. Well, there's no doubt they could be Samaritan. Of course, we, we, the last few videos that we made, we talk about the Samaritans. They, they were horrible people. How long we are into this thing? Man, let me see this. Good grief. All right, then let's keep on moving. Uh, and this, this situation highlights that. Sadly, at the home at the time of the shooting, their one-year-old child who is not hurt. All the children are going to have uh, some emotional recovery that they have to deal with. Um, but, you know, they're, here they are without a mom and dad, and, and someone's got to explain to them what happened. Detroit Police Chief James White says their department is taking it hard and are looking to learn from the tragedy. We'll certainly be looking at anything internally that we can do to help our officers who may find themselves in a domestic situation or something along those lines. Sources tell Fox 2 there was a recent breakup and some fallout after that, but this was unexpected, to say the least. Of course it was expected cannot be unexpected it has to be expected let me tell you something about cops throughout my research concerning police officers concerning people that are in 
relationship with caps. Especially the woman. There was a white woman I was reading her comment on YouTube. She mentioned when you are a woman or you are in a relationship with a police officer and this fellow is an abusive uh, guy, this is possibly the worst relationship you could ever get into. Because every time you call the police department, that is if you choose to call because you're going to get tired of it. And she said, they're going to pop up there. They're going to say, oh, Frank, is that you? What's going on? Uh, you know, we're just having a scrabble and sh she call you guys there. Come on, Frank, man, what's, what's going on here, man? I go home and get some rest. Uh, come back tomorrow. We'll see how it works. Hey, no problem. Because they want arrested them. Okay, they can beat, they can find their wives bleeding to death in their eyes or swollen and beaten. They won't take them to jail. Okay, it's really hard because when you call, you call their baddies. You don't call the police, you call the main man, especially if that guy is the chief police officer. If they call, it's the chief house, and then they send you over there, rookie. You're not going to handcuff the chief. It's not going to happen like that. She said, those guys, they are very abusive. And they will, they'll stalk you wherever you go. If they cannot get with you, they will take you. And another thing you need to consider when you are dating uh, somebody that is a cop, which I personally will never do in my entire life. I will never date a woman that is a police officer. I won't do that. That's me. Okay, I would never do date a police officer. I'll date army women or whatever the branch, but the police officer, no. Why? Because I study them and I know how things react when you are in. I know certain things that they say, certain off they take. They don't know what it means though, but they take it. Okay, a police officer and a, and a military person is not the same. You see, when you are a police officer, you're on duty 24-7. 24 7 even when you go home you're still on duty okay the street is hot 24 7 a military person is not it, you you have to be deployed and all that but that's not the point the point is here when you have an emotional woman with a gun and she can legally use this gun and get away with it like that woman that used that gun and that fell over there i believe in was it in arizona she break into his apartment and shot him uh, I forgot her name. She received 10 years. <laughs> this thing happened like four years ago. She only got six more years. I forgot her name, but it happened four years ago. 2018? Is that what that was? Or 2017? Five years ago, she got four, four or five years. She got six years to go. And then after that, she out. Okay? Uh, they will literally kill you. Is the same thing go for the dude. Any police officer that are men, especially when they are chief of police... You ain't gonna arrest the chief, man. He he made your paycheck. You're just going to sit there, talk a little, and see what thing can get out. And um, you know, you mind your own business, you go back home. That's all it is. And that guy, certain guys, the moment you tell them I'm leaving you, you can't. How are you going to leave me? You mind. That's why I always caution our people when they come to that high value thing. You get this man, he's a high value man. You get this woman, he's a high value. You get him for his value. You get her for her value. What do you think gonna happen to you when they lost their value? You know, people lose value, you know that? When they lose their job, when they lose that investment. <laughs> what, what's, what do you think gonna happen? You, you think you can just walk away? And say, well, pff, you lost your value. Let me get another one. It, it don't work like that, man. Those those guys, they will take you out. They're, oh, hell no. <laughs> for better or for worse. You were there when we were making millions. And now my bank or my investment things went belly up. My cryptocurrency went belly up. And you want to get... Nah. You see, they put the whole the domestic violence in your face because... That's like that's plausible. That's like when you see that, huh? It makes sense. They were fighting and stuff. Most likely, it could be they all they invested all their whatever retirement money, caps, benefit things, and then and, and they lost it, man. 
And then the fellow, you know, it's like, yo, honey, we lost everything. Let's leave the kids. And uh, hopefully your mom, my mom, our family, your family, uh, the good people out there will take care of them. But let's go. That's what happened, man. You know, those. Hey, that's what's going to keep on happening because this thing went belly up. Get ready, man. Get ready to see a lot of 988, all right? Come on, movie, man. A glimmer of hope this evening for a young woman who lost her entire family and nearly her life in a local murder-suicide tragedy. The 20-year-old NKU student was shot in the head late last month. She is now awake and responsive. Local 12's David Winter broke the news this afternoon. He's here now with details on her condition. David, how's she doing? Much better uh, considering, Adam. Awake and responsive. Those are the first two words and the first steps in what will be a long road to recovery for Samantha Kane. This picture, so poignant, tells the story right now for Samantha Kane. She is holding Macy Gamble's hand. Macy, her best friend from NKU, spoke to us shortly after Samantha was shot. I can't imagine the trauma she's going to have. And yeah, but I also know she's very strong and she's going to pull through it. Those wishful words turning portentous as Macy can now report Samantha's eyes are open and she is responsive. She is now stable and getting better every day. Macy says that Samantha is tracking people in the room with her eyes and she is responding to people by squeezing their hands. As you may recall, Samantha was found on February 27th in her home near New Richmond clinging to life. Samantha, along with her 13-year-old brother, her father, and her grandfather were all shot in the head. Samantha was the only one to survive. Police say Samantha's mother, Teresa Kane, seen here on her Facebook page, shot all of them and then shot and killed herself due to being distraught over the family's financial troubles. The more Okay, so you, you just hear it. This woman, they lost all their money on that, well, we, we, we will assume. It's on that crypto thing. And sh they can't pay their bills, okay? It's not like they can't pay. They cannot live comfortably the way that you're used to. And she called her father, the grandfather, the daughter, and the son, and she shot all of them in the head. She shot all of them in the head, and she shot herself. And the daughter survived. But if we can call that surviving, she can. She responds. She's going to pull through, Okay. But that's what it is, Bridget, okay? A financial issue, of course, they always say, well, the economy is doing great, the economy is doing right, the economy is doing this. Is it really? Remember, a lot of people invested in that crypto thing because they were afraid that the cash, the so-called elite going to crash the cash, they're going to bring the mark of the beast, or which is uh, the cryptocurrency. They accept it. I don't give a crap about mark of the beast. They all want to live in harmony or they want to live comfortably. Now, this woman, okay, didn't have the money to live comfortably. The, she I found some financial issue. She just wait until the man probably went to sleep and then she killed all of them. Okay, she killed the husband, the grandfather, the son, and she shot the daughter. The daughter survived and she shot herself. All right, let's listen to it again, man. This is no joke, Bridget, okay? Of course, beloved, this thing, of course... I forgot. I forgot all about that. Okay, this is uh, this is this thing is right there. Okay, it's a uh, plague number five, of course, uh, destruction by uh, the sword. You know, plague number nine, execution by the sword. Okay, that's what's going on over there. Okay, she she just uh, let's listen to it. Okay, she just killed both of uh, the, her father. Well, I believe the grandfather, her husband, and her son, the daughter, and herself. But the daughter survived brother, her father, and her grandfather were in her home near New Richmond, clinging to life. Samantha, along with her 13-year-old brother, her father... Oh, 13-year-old brother. Wait, hang on. Who's this? Uh, oh, okay, Samantha. Okay, all right. That was her son. ...and her grandfather were all shot in the head. Samantha was the only one to survive. Police say Samantha's mother, Teresa Kane, seen here on her Facebook page, shot all of them and then shot... Teresa Kane. Why did this happen? Gleamer? <sighs> Cincinnati? Teresa Kane? Give me a second. Okay. All right. Well, I tried to look up the Facebook thing, but anyway, so that's her right there. And killed herself due to being distraught over the family's financial troubles. 
The morning of the shooting, the family was getting evicted from their home. We feel that maybe even instead of telling her spouse, uh, she shot him and then systematically went upstairs um, and did the same with her father and the children. The Claremont County Sheriff says he is continuing to investigate to get further insight into exactly what happened on Rebel Ridge Road that morning. And we now have new information regarding the gun that was used. The sheriff says Teresa Kane used a Taurus 38, like the revolver in this picture, to kill her family. He says she is the one who purchased the gun, but would not give further details. So much support already from the community. $7,000 raised to send Samantha's father and brother back to Georgia for their funerals, and $35,000 raised for Samantha. But so much more will be needed for a young woman who has already lost so much. Samantha is still nonverbal and has a long road ahead for recovery. Her friend Macy says that she is surrounded by lots of balloons and cards and flowers, stuffed animals, and aunts and uncles and cousins and friends. She's not sure whether Samantha knows yet that her entire nuclear family, her mother, her father, her brother, and her grandfather are gone. Adam? Excuse me. When you when you wake up from this thing, you realize like everybody's gone, man. You're on your own. Why? Because your mom was gonna get evicted from their home, and they didn't want to become homeless. They lost all their money, and then set. That's, <laughs> That's it, man. You know, they just kill everybody. You know. This is terrible, man. But hey, that's what's going to happen. We're going to hear this thing a lot more now. Rich people, they're probably not going to keep putting it in the news like that. But hey, that's what that is, man. Okay. Tonight, we're learning more about the Eagle shooting that killed one victim and injured another, including the identities of those involved. The Ada County Coroner's Office says 36 year old Brittany Lugaresi of Boise was killed in what police are calling. 36 years old. Huh, credit union. All right. Then. A suspected murder suicide Wednesday afternoon. According to the Ada County Sheriff's Department, suspect Michael Lugaresi shot his extreme. Michael Lugaresi. Uh huh. Changed wife, Brittany, inside the credit union where she worked. Police say he then shot and injured one of her co workers before exiting the building and fatally shooting himself. Despite life saving measures, Michael died in the hospital overnight. We will bring you updates on this story as we learn more. Okay. This guy, Michael, went over there and blast people, killed her wife, his wife. Okay. Uh, over there, let me see if uh, we can get that. Was happening like three days ago. See if there's any. Any update on this thing? It's happening. Well, after, after the. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, there is no, there is no update. Uh. Okay. All right, then there is no update. Uh, those are small town. Okay, man in custody after being shot by police during pursuit. Victim and suspect dead and ego shooting one person injured. Why? Well, this is small town. You got all those things going on over there. Hmm. Hmm. There is no update yet, but hey. A guy went over there, killed his wife, shot an injured co-worker, and then killed himself. The wife walked out of a bank. She walked out of a credit union bank. Is that what that is? Let's listen to this again. Tonight, we're learning more about the Eagle shooting that killed one victim and injured another, including the identities of those involved. The Ada County Coroner's Office says 36-year-old Brittany Lugaresi of Boise was killed in what police are calling a suspected murder-suicide Wednesday afternoon. According to the Ada County Sheriff's Department, suspect Michael Lugaresi shot his estranged wife, Brittany, inside the credit union where she worked. Police say he then shot and injured one of her co-workers before exiting the building and fatally shooting himself. Despite life-saving measures, Michael died in the hospital overnight. We will bring you updates on this story as we learn more. 
All right, Michael shot 36 year old die. Is that what that is? Is that the one here? Oh no, we watched this one. You know that guy that you know killed the whole family and stuff like that, and then that pastor, um, and Enoch, crazy. All right, let's keep on moving. And a wife and a father-in-law are dead in what investigators are calling a murder-suicide in Lincoln County. And police say the tragedy happened in front of the couple's four children. With no history of domestic violence, investigators don't know yet what led up to the eruption of violence. The shooting happened last night at a house on Highway W between Troy and Foley. News 4's Russell Kinsaw spoke with a neighbor about what happened. Investigators say the children have spoken with experts who are trained to talk to children who've experienced trauma to find out what was going on in the home and what may have led to the shooting last night. But they still have a long way to go to get a clear picture of what led to the shooting and the death of three people in that home. It is very sad. Very, very sad. Neighbors say they're in shock over the shooting deaths at a neighbor's home. Connie Simmons says her grandchildren know the four children who live in the home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they went to school with them. Yeah, they rode the bus together. Simmons said she had no idea something like this could happen at her neighbors. It's sad and it's shocking. Um, they seem like a normal family. Kids seem to play outside a lot. I mean, it's just it's shocking. <laughs> It's real shocking. Sheriff's, Sheriff's officials say it was one of the children living in the home who called 911. When the trooper and the deputies arrived, they found three adult adults, uh, victims of gunshots at the residence. Sheriff Harrell says 56-year-old Philip Folan shot and killed his wife, 38-year-old Lauren Folan, and her father, 72-year-old Scott Causey, before turning the gun on himself. Wait, uh, hang on, let's, let's listen to this. How many people I shot? As 56 year old Philip Folan shot. Okay, Philip is 56, 5 plus 6, 11. Mm -hmm. Killed his wife, 38 year old Lauren Folan, and her father. Her wife, his wife, 38, 3 plus 8, 11 again. Father, 72 year old Scott Causey, before. 72, 7 plus 2, 9. Mm -hmm. Turning the gun on himself. The children were in the home, and he says saw some of what happened. It was a relatively small residence, and four children between the ages of 1 and 15 years old were inside the residence at the time, and they were the ones that alerted authorities to the events at the residence. Harold says the older children gathered the younger ones and ran to a neighbor's as they called for help. The reason for the shooting remains a mystery. We're trying to identify family and friends to see what they knew beyond what the children have already told us and see uh, what we can do in the future to help other families. Neighbors are worried about the children who lost both of their parents. It's a shock. They were quiet and to themselves. According to the sheriff, those four children are now in protective custody under the care of Children's Services. Hmm. In Troy, Missouri, Russell Kinsall. News Crazy, Four. man. Let's see if really we have sad story. Uh, three, days, three days ago, let's see if we have any, uh, any update. In. First at 10, a News 4 investigation. See if they have any updates three days ago. What the hell is this? Standoff with suspect ends in Herman after officer shot. Um, wow. Anyway, three days ago. Oops. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Should get close. Okay. Um. Okay. Huh. Usually those things happen so fast they don't there is there is nothing here. Hmm. Okay, there's Woman shot killed in St. Louis Saturday. Hmm. Man shot after argument in La in downtown. All right, they don't. Is that what I mean? Stand off. Okay. All right. There's no um update though. So, but we know people are just delaying themselves. Okay. I would lean towards a very angry, passionate crime against family members that he had a long. <laughs> standing more than a disagreement with it's more like a, a hatred towards or, or felt like there was no other option in his mm. mind 
A Phoenix family massacre made national headlines last year. Now, Arizona's family is digging through investigative reports that reveal stunning new details. Marla Hudgens and her three young children were killed in a murder-suicide by her husband, Jason Hudgens. And now the medical examiner and toxicology Jason. reports reveal what truly happened behind closed doors. And a former FBI special agent says the way he killed his family paints a picture of what was going on inside his mind. True Crime Arizona, Brianna Whitney has been looking into this case for months now. Brianna, what can we take away from these new reports here? Yeah, there's a lot more details to unpack. And Jason Hudgens is what law enforcement calls a family annihilator. Now, we had been waiting to find out the cause of death of his wife and his three young kids. While he used a gun on himself, he used something different on all three of them, a knife and his own hands. Based on all the new information, a former FBI agent is explaining why he believes Jason Hudgens killed his family. Right, In an unfathomable tragedy like this, one of the top questions... Nice house, man. Nice, beautiful house. 900 Augusta. <coughs> Excuse me. Nice house. For detectives nice and loved house. ones alike, was this premeditated or did he snap? This was somewhat methodical. He had planned this out at least for a period of time. The reason former FBI supervisory special agent Lance Lysing says that is because of what we've learned in the medical and death reports for 40-year-old Marla Hudgens. Marla was 40 years old. We recently completed that. Her three-year-old son Christopher and her six-month-old twins Gwen and Faye. The medical examiner's reports for all three list cause of death as multiple sharp force injuries, manner of death, homicide. All four of them were stabbed by Jason Hudgens with their throats slit. Stabbing somebody is very intimate. That's an intimate form of, of hurting someone. That's You can't stand 20 feet away like you can with a gun. That act of using that knife just displays that level of anger and intimacy that was within that anger you know i mean he really wanted to be involved in these killings the reports also say there were multiple blunt force injuries to both marla and christopher which lysing says displays even more passion and rage it could be stressors in life that were affecting him felt like there was no other way out marla's friends had shared with us last year their marriage was not happy and marla wanted to get a divorce but as for a motive to kill his own children Lysing says there's two mindsets that may intersect. The first... Irrationally, in their own mind, they think that they're doing their kids a favor by, by ending their lives because them. they don't see a future for them. Yeah, that's what happened. Again, like I said before, I'm not quite sure what this man was doing for a living. And then you get down with this man because he can't make money. And then all of a sudden, he lost his value. And, and you think you can walk away with that? Like, why are you? Why, I own you. And the kids. <laughs> you gonna leave me? Divorce? I don't know. But the second, a direct action toward Marla, who struggled with infertility for years to even have her own children and create her family. Well, if he was so angry at his wife that he wanted to take away everything that she loved, everything that was good to her, she probably loved those children above all. And so taking those children away was just another act to get back at the wife. So sad. Um, the toxicology report showed Jason had amphetamine in his system at the time, which Lysing says could add to paranoia, or he used that to help numb the pain of what he was doing. Marla had an opioid in her system, but we don't know why she had that in her system. Okay, the, the whole family was on drugs, and they were broke. Marriage is not happy. That's what's going on with 83. See, those people have been doing this thing for a while now. The wife know what the husband is doing out there. The husband know what the wife is doing out there. They don't care. They just do each other. They go out there. They have fun. As long as the money is coming, as long as they are happy, they don't give a crap. The kids have the food. The house is paid. Beautiful cars being bought every two years. The vacation. And then uh, they don't care. But the moment the money is not coming, man, and things are unhappy, everybody got to go. That's what they do, man.
News Alert. We have some new information about a shooting from over the weekend. Police tell us it was a murder-suicide. The murder victim is identified as 20-year-old Patience Watley of Colorado Springs. Love News reporter Melissa Henry is joining us live where that shooting happened. This is on Saturday off Uinta and Mesa in old Colorado City. Melissa, uh, Melissa, police say the victim and the suspect were dating. Hmm. Adam, police tell me the shooting that we reported on here on Saturday appears to have been a domestic violence situation. The family of that murder victim reached out to 11 News. They say they want the community to know Patious Watley was a young woman, just 20 years old, and that she had so much life ahead of her, they say. They also say she leaves behind two children, a three-year-old and a six-month-old. Now, I talked with Tessa today. That's a domestic violence resource group here in Colorado Springs. Their CEO tells me they've seen an increase over the past couple years in deadly domestic violence situations like this. If somebody does choose to come to you, no, you might be the first and only person they ever choose to talk to, listen to them, validate them, and help them think through what might be next steps they would want to make. The suspect in this shooting, who reportedly died from suicide, was 22-year-old Enrique Palomera, according to police. According to Colorado court records, he faced criminal charges about six years ago that included violent crimes and weapons charges. Live in Colorado Springs, Melissa Henry, KKTV, 11 News. Okay, Melissa, thank you. And if you or someone you know is in a hmm. domestic violence situation, Tessa has a helpline that you can call. That number is 719-633-3890. Any, any updates? They have any update going on here? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Domestic violence increase during the pandemic. Ah, uh, we know about this. People lose their job. The money is not there. Killing each other. Hmm. Hmm. What? Okay, there's still no updates because things are happening too much. They don't even went back for updates. Let's keep one more. Whoops. Korean minister from a church in Gardena committed a father family murder suicide and Korean American community in SoCal is in great shock. According to the Gardena Police Department on March 3rd, Joseph Chung, 51 year old, killed his 49 year old wife and 8 year old daughter and took his own life. Police arrived at the scene around 11 p.m. after receiving a report from a church officials that they lost touch with Chung and found all the family members dead at the scene. Although the detectives found clues of financial struggles of Chung family, it is still unclear to conclude the motive as Chung did not have any records of domestic violence or depression. Even exactly. So, um, it, 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 the Korean minister wipes out his entire family and murder suicide. The money is not there anymore. It, it, although there ain't no domestic violence, I, again, beloved. I will venture to say 99.99% .99 of those things have nothing to do with domestic violence. Okay, the wife know better. When the money is good, she will not call the police and have the husband in prison and the money will be caught. <laughs> they won't do that. They won't call the police. They, won't, uh, they, they, will, they might call the police, but they won't press any charges because they don't want the husband to go to, to jail and turn into a black man or they don't want the husband to do go to prison and then the kids will raise it on a father where's the money man is one thing of really bad you know this dude is a korean minister some pastor took out the whole family and then they find the papers the papers he had financial issue okay
Even his church members also stated that he was outgoing and getting along well with others in the church so no one knew what kind of struggles this family was facing. And this is why the news became even more shocking for the community. Korean minister from a church in Gardena committed a father family murder suicide and Korean American community okay. in SoCal is in great shock. According to okay, South, South California, you know, this dude, he um, took the whole family out, man. You know, he was having financial issue and then that's it. You know, that's what that is. Following an overnight shooting in Colchester, Let's get right out to NBC 5's Amanda Martin Ryan. She's live on the scene near Holly Cross Road. Amanda, what do we know at this hour? Zuri, I'm at the Wellesley condo complex where the Colchester police, she says, a man fatally shot his wife before turning the gun on himself. I'm actually going to step away so you can see the crime scene tape is still up as investigators have been on the scene for hours. Police say they got a call just before 10 last night about a fight and that witnesses heard a loud bang. This morning, police saying they found a handgun in the apartment and are still continuing to collect evidence from the unit. They expect the investigation to continue throughout the day. This investigation is uh, pretty much a murder-suicide investigation. That's our preliminary uh, take on it. Uh, we've got some initial findings that the male uh, shot the female and then turned the weapon onto himself. Uh, these two, the male and female, were married. In, uh, together. The uh, kind of added tragedy to all this is that uh, there was a uh, minor child in the, in the residence at the time. The child had ran to a home, to the neighbor's home, and that neighbor actually placed the 911 call. The child is now safe with relatives. I'll be back here later tonight with more coverage and any updates as the investigation continues. Live in Colchester, Amanda Martin Ryan, NBC5 News. Okay. All right, Amanda, thanks for that update. And we do want to mention if you or someone you know is thinking about suicide, dial 988 for the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline or text VT to 741 741 right. for the crisis. So that's what that is, man. You know, a lot of 988 in the miss, man, you know, and people, they, it's, it's crazy. And then the media, those are local news. They really don't want to would emphasize on this okay this is like some local news over there okay so uh let me see if they have any well that happened like 11 days ago they sure have some kind of thing here oh boy mm. oh let's check that guy mr caring guy Okay, this dude, that's all he does. But they always the de lady complaining about his video. Okay, Jackson Cummings, um, you know, this woman, a young girl. Okay, okay, 988. He can't even put the, the name in there because YouTube going to do hash. Okay, let's watch this dude, what happened to this fellow. I'm going to cut the music. Uh, this video is in loving memory. Ja Jackson Cummings will sadly die by 988. Okay. Jackson Cummings died age 41 on the 15th of January 2019. Um, let's see what happened to this dude. The family of a troubled DJ who jumped to his death from the top of a multi-story car park fear his medication. Ah, oh, boy. Medication. All right. That, uh, that, that happened in 2019. Let me see if anything is recent. Let's see this young girl right there. Uh... Okay, the, it's 24. Okay, this recently happened. February 12, 2023. Okay, Diane, Diana Ditz. Is that what it is? So she looked one of those like supermodel on TikTok, Instagram, doing this stuff and think it's cute. 
Okay, California mom. Oh, ah, okay. Well then, there you go. That's uh, there you go. Okay, so only fan model who has been accused of accused of pedo baiting by editing her photo to look like a child has taken her own life. Okay. Oh, that's a mother. Wait, hang on. Who has been accused of pedo baiting by editing her photo to look like a child? Is that what that is? Okay, she is a woman here. And she edited her photo to look younger because that's what the people are after, I guess. Uh, has taken her own life. Just gonna do this and then that's all. Okay, yeah, she looked like a child here. Okay. And uh, Diana was known online as Coconut Kitty, committed 988 on the 12th February, according to the house on her Instagram page, addressed to all lovers of fans of coconuts. Um, it's unfair, life is unfair. We wish you guys could get to know her friends. It won't end up well once you get into that. See, she was such a light to this world. Hmm, true, she was always glowing and uh you could never slow that girl down she was so hard-headed strong oh boy okay those are statements okay if you got you got things like that it won't last you know it won't it won't last it won't last you know all those things they are fake okay <laughs> all those images you know big levi does images okay i do i do I generate image. They all fake. They just cobble up certain things, Photoshop it, the and then they render it in another software, they bought it, Photoshop it, and then they don't look like that. Okay. Okay, so that's what happened. Dana has reported the net worth of about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars according to SNBC uh, well NNBC or whatever thirteen. We cited unconfirmed reports that she had suffered from depression that may involve backlash from her online work. Okay, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars still not happy. According to a twenty twenty one article in Rolling Stone, Dana had been criticized for editing herself to look like a child, with some accusing her of catering to pedophile. Um Oh boy. I did get I did get tired of people commenting on my looks. When I was coming, she told the magazine it's kinda of bothered me. Um regarding her appearance online, she said I wanted to make something that looked like a real life anime character, small chin, big eyes. That was within my likeness because I used a picture of myself and I edited it. That's what happened with the whole anime genre, man. It's it's just school girls, 12-year-old girl. They they like you. You got adults. It, it, the whole anime waifu, we are booze thing. <laughs> this thing is upside down. But anyway, this young woman, you know, she's not there. She make herself look like a child or whatever. So, um... She, she, she's gone, okay? <laughs> Crazy. A new report in the New York Post finds a record number of NYPD officers resigning this year, with more than 200 officers already tapping out in the first two months of this year. Fox 5's Ashley Rodriguez asked the mayor about the exodus. Public safety is a prerequisite to our prosperity. Yet public safety's first line of defense in the city, its police officers, are resigning at a record level in 2023, according to a new report from the New York Post, which found 239 officers quit this year, a 117% increase compared to the same period over the last two years, the highest number of resignations since 2007. Last year, the NYPD saw just over 3,700 officers retire, the most since 9-11. We have a law enforcement crisis in this city and it's in this country and it's serious. Nation yeah, always have some Negro going over there and you know, give up, give you the news and so how long we are into good grief. All right, let's keep on moving. Can't go to work and 
Let's watch what's going on over there in California, Silicon Valley and all that good stuff. We begin with that deadly flooding emergency right here in California. The state facing another round of heavy rain after a devastating parade of winter storms. 11 million people under flood alerts across the West through midweek. The unrelenting rain turning towns into rivers. Emergency crews rescuing drivers trapped in rising floodwaters after a levee breached in Monterey County. Thousands of residents forced to leave their homes. Here's a satellite image of that so-called atmospheric river bearing down on the state. The system massive in size, higher elevations facing even more snow and dangerous winds. This section of Highway 1 in Big Sur forced to shut down after a catastrophic landslide caused severe damage. Another storm system wreaking havoc in parts of the Great Lakes into the Northeast, causing hazardous road conditions in Erie, Pennsylvania. ABC's senior meteorologist Rob Marciano leading us off tonight from the storm zone. Tonight, first responders rescuing stranded drivers from life-threatening floodwaters after a levee breach in Monterey County, California. Time to evacuate. Water is coming. Rescuers going door to door, warning residents to leave after a 100-foot wide breach in the levee on the Pajaro River. More than 8,000 people forced to flee. These families stuck on a bridge waiting for transport to nearby shelters. 11 million people under flood alerts tonight. Dramatic new drone video showing a raging river tearing through Kernville, California. Look how violent that water is. Officials ordering evacuations in Kern County as well. At least two deaths have been reported. California and Nevada declaring states of emergency. The entire West struggling to deal with the 11th atmospheric river event, dumping up to a foot of rain the past week. In Santa Cruz, heavy rain causing massive flooding and damaging roads, stranding residents like Gabby David. Can't go to work and can't do um, every day. Her name is Gabby, Gabrielle. This is Gabrielle. She's in the midst. All right, let's keep on moving. Day normal errands. This section of Highway 1 and Big Sur forced to shut down after this rock slide damaged the road water pouring over the side. For the first time in nearly four years, they're actually releasing water from one of the state's largest reservoirs, rolling down the Oroville spillway at 8,000 cubic feet per second. And in Lake Tahoe, historic amounts of snowfall, another 32 inches in some areas. People who have been here for a very long time have said this is more snow than they've ever seen. A separate system marching from the Great Lakes to the north. All right. Northeast. Okay, let me let me go. Well, uh, of course, most of you already know this. This is plague number six right here. And the 10 plagues of the Apocalypse of Abraham. Okay, increase of hell and snow. All right, the weather, which is number 10, thunder voices and destroying earthquake. Okay, thunder voices, loud boom, loud nose, and of course, the weather. Okay, that's why all those things are happening. And it's only going to increase like we've been warning the people. It's only going to get worse. You cannot stop it because the reason is you put your hands upon the children of the mighty one and all those things are happening because of what you did unto us so that's what that is all right bringing heavy snow to pennsylvania so let's get right to rob marciano in folsom california and rob the state bracing for even more flooding yeah, the rain's ramping up again. We even had a tornado warning earlier with a funnel cloud spotted, so we've got it all. Flood watches remain in effect. Winter storm warnings remain in effect up in the mountains, and the rains will increase tonight, but really come in on Tuesday morning. That's when the next atmospheric river, that's when the next deadly flooding potential is going to be in this state. Now, the energy from yesterday... Well, again, they keep telling, they keep calling those things atmospheric rivers. That's not what that is. Just chariots dumping those things over there. Okay, on most rivers and stuff. You guys are complaining, oh, there's a drought, there's a drought. We need the rain, we need the rain. And then now you get it, it oh, we, are, we don't need the rain, it's too much. We don't need the snow, it's too much. Get out of here, atmospheric rivers. Get out of here, man. Three people are dead. Three more are recovering this morning after a house explosion in Barrow County. This is what it looked like after multiple explosions engulfed the house in flames. This video was taken by an 11 Alive viewer. This happened just after midnight on Saturday morning outside of Winder on Hidden Acres Road. Fire crews say after the first explosion, several people were trapped inside the home. As firefighters arrived, multiple explosions were going off inside and the fire was causing the house to collapse. When crews finally got it under control, they went inside and found the three people who died. They also discovered multiple propane cylinders, which is what they say caused the explosions. Of course, that's what they would say, but 
we know those things been happening like forever and we warn those people the ley line are causing this but of course hey okay oh people don't care let's keep on moving has been a waiting game to find out who was involved and what happened here. Small aircraft that has broken into two. A race against time. We're doing a visual on the plane. It's basically in the center of the lake. It was an in-air collision uh, and both planes immediately went to the ground. Those on Lake Hartridge rushed to try and save whoever was inside two small planes. One, a Piper J3 Cub seaplane from Jack Brown Seaplane Base just eight minutes away. The other, a Cherokee Piper 161 fixed wing plane operated by Sunrise Aviation from Polk State College. One of the planes is a seaplane, so it's floating. We get there. We are going to enter the water. We're going to see if we can pull any sickness out of that sea plane. Sky 10 shows one plane partially floating, the other completely submerged 21 feet underwater. The cockpit of the plane is, is too far down for us to say, so you try to get down. Uh, bystanders are advised the cockpit of the plane is, is completely destroyed. Officials were able to pull one person out and immediately start CPR, but Chief Steve Lester with the Polk County Sheriff's Office says the person never made it. We do have one confirmed deceased but I can't give you any identification because we haven't verified all that yet. We do believe that there are possibly other deceased. We just don't know yet. 30 minutes later, officials recover another body from the water. Hours later, the search and rescue turned into a recovery. Deputies confirmed four people were recovered from Lake Hartridge inside the Piper Cherokee 161, 24 year old Faith Irene Bakerand and 19 year old Zachary Jean Mace, both from Winter Haven, one a pilot and flight instructor, the other a student at Polk State College. And the Piper J3 Cub seaplane, Randall Albert Crawford, a 67 year old from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, another person on board with him still hasn't been identified. Hmm. And Angelina, the uh, sheriff's office has identified the operators of both planes involved. One of them is Polk State College, the other a local seaplane company. Great glory. So, yeah, the ley lines all over. Keep on moving. A small plane crashed and it wound up overturned in the Everglades. The two survivors on board left stranded in the swamp and now we're hearing from the rescuers. Local 10's Cody Weddle is live in Southwest Miami-Dade with the story. Cody. And Louie and Nicole, the two passengers on this plane had just lived through a miracle. They survived a plane crash, but then they were stranded in the Everglades. And when someone is stranded, that's when these guys behind me, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, fire up their engines. We train pretty well, so it's uh, we maintain a, a state of calm in the aircraft. All right, Robert, been sucking your own stuff right here. That, that's all right. That's all right. It helps us do our jobs. New video shows how rescue crews responded to a small plane crashed in the Everglades on Tuesday. We arrived on scene. Uh, assessed the scenario, saw the survivors out on the wing. The five-man team from Miami-Dade Fire Rescue telling us how they pulled off the risky rescue. It is a very uh, um, inaccessible area. Um, most of that area is uh, one to two feet of water, uh, swamp. Uh, vehicles can't get back there. The two aboard the plane had survived the crash, left only with minor injuries, but they were stranded nine miles from the closest road, the area only accessible by airboat and by helicopter. When they lowered me onto the wing, I made contact with the survivors. I assessed their, their calmness and their... Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy, a lot of sucking in this thing. But anyway... um. Uh, the, 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 the ley line is going on. They, those are not things that happened in the last year or months ago. That's two days ago. Over there in the Everglades, you know, Fort uh, close to West Side. I'm not quite sure exactly. It's in Miami, you know, it's like all the way to Pembroke Pines. But this is over here in South Florida, I mean, you know, a few days ago. All right. Two days ago, to be precise. Okay. Whoops. And developing now, tragedy in Miami Lakes after an apparent murder-suicide left five people dead. Among those dead, a mother and her adult son. Police say they have a pretty good idea who pulled the trigger, but the search continues for answers. Local 10's Annalise Garcia live in Miami Lakes with the details. Good morning, Alex. Andrew, well, we now know that the shooter is the son of one of the people inside that was found. 
yesterday. Now, police do tell us that this all started with a family member that hadn't heard from her loved one, so she called 911. They came and did a welfare check, and that's when they found the five bodies in this home. One after another, officers found five people dead in a Miami Lakes home Friday night. Miami-Dade police responded to a 911 call from a loved one around 10 in the morning. Detectives made entry to the house on Northwest 87th Court and found the tragic nightmare. They continued to search the different rooms and they found additional bodies in those rooms. They were able to find on one of the last bedrooms a male that was deceased from uh, a gunshot wound, but it appears to be self-inflicted. Oh, you don't this. Distraught, this man telling local 10 News two of the bodies found are his ex-wife and their son. It freaked me out. I just got home. It's terrifying. I don't know why he keeps five people. Four himself. Investigators with Miami-Dade police say the bodies found were of two men and three women. Neighbors in this quiet community say they are shocked and left wondering why. I mean, I know that mental illness, it's... You know, a problem that's in our not country. what that is. That's not what that is. That has nothing to do with me. And the identities of these five people have yet to be released. Uh, okay, they, they release it. They release it. It was a few days ago. Two days ago. Is that what that is? Um, yeah, that's what it is. The, the tragedy the unfolding in Miami Lakes. Five people found dead in a home in an apparent murder-suicide. And among those killed, a mother and her son. Loved ones trying, now trying to make sense of all of it. Local 10's Christian okay. Delarose. That's, that's the son. And their son. It freaked me out. I just got home. Okay, the son did it, all right? <laughs> Probably lost all that money in that crypto, man. And then, you know, hey, bam. Crazy stuff, man. Ay, ay, ay. Carefully, they make their way upstairs. No idea if the gunman is waiting for them. This is Kingdom Hall, a place of worship for local Jehovah's Witnesses. It's believed they were in the middle of a service when the attack took place. I didn't realize what was happening. I was filming with my phone and only realized through the Zoom that someone was shooting at the Jehovah's Witnesses. Hmm. Then I realized what was going on there. A little later, once the building had been secured, a number of people were escorted out with their hands on their heads. Initially, there were reports the attacker may have escaped and been at large in the city. Okay, so that's what happened. There was a group of Jehovah's Witnesses, so to speak. Forgive me for saying the name, but I shouldn't say that. But there's a group of mighty one witnesses, so they were worshiping, okay. And this guy, he was an ex witness, okay, he was an ex member. So he came in in there with a, a, a bag of popcorn and then jiffy popped the whole place, you know, took six people out, including a pregnant woman. The woman survived, but the baby, not so much. So that's what's going on, man. You know, we told you it's going to happen everywhere and to all of you. This is just a warm up. You know, 2024 is going to be much more hell and people won't believe this. If you're watching this in the future, you're like, man, I should have listened to this dude. But uh, I find him late or I was too high on my pride. Well, we're not here anymore. We're somewhere. I have no idea where we're at, but. Hey, now you got those things behind and you're going to watch these videos and learn as much as you can. We'll highly recommend you read the books that we're studying and, and secrets and see what you can do if you're watching this in the future, if you can even get those books. But hey, that's what that is, man. Let's keep on moving, man. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, this is Turkey again. Uh, that was on the 10th. Three days ago, they have another earthquake. They had another earthquake. So it won't stop, all right? It won't stop. All right? That's another, another place. They have an earthquake, okay? Uh, it's Kayseri, Turkey, March 10th, uh, 4.8. You know what to do. So that's what it is. All right? <laughs> you can hear the breathing in that man, you know? Hmm. All right. Hmm. All right. You got this. Hmm. Hmm. 
Crazy. Okay, you can see the date here, March 10th, 2022. <laughs> All right, then. Great glory there. Hmm. Crazy. Mm -hmm. The plague is there. Uh, look at this number right here. Let me just... Uh, we just enlarge so you can see this number on the wall the fellow was 18 years old got into an argument with his mom and he decided that you know what let me burn your clothes and it burned 16 units okay 18 years old burned 16 unit and then the number nine right here destroy those people's stuff man <laughs> crazy all right this is plague number two right here fiery conflagration of the cities okay keep on moving hmm Okay, what the, what the hell, man? It's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not. Now not. to that family of three found dead in their home in New Jersey tonight. Police are calling it a case of murder-suicide. Cops say the father killed his wife and 15-year-old son and then killed himself. The news <laughs> rattling neighbors in this typically quiet. Oh, yeah, we watched this before, the 37. We watched that before. Still can't believe what a recent drug bust uncovered. We went into the house and found 18,000 pills of stuff that can kill a lot of people. The pills so deadly because of what they contain. We've recovered plenty of counterfeit pills before that were truly fentanyl. And this was a lot of fentanyl, 18,000 pills. Just last month, the Sterling Heights Police Department narcotics team received information that led them to start investigating alleged drug dealer, Miguel Angel Rosario Neva. Dude name is Miguel Angel. <laughs> you, can't, <laughs> you can't make this up, but the guy name is Miguel Angel. Okay. Michael the Angel. He, you just can't make this up. So that's what that is, man. We, we're not making those things. Oh, okay. This is real. Us. That person goes under surveillance. We start watching and following. Police say the investigation included multiple drug deals with undercover officers. That surveillance then led investigators to get a search warrant, which then led to the Pontiac home of Rosario Neves. Once inside, they found 18 bags, each containing 1,000 pills of fentanyl. But investigators say they were disguised as something else. And more disturbing is each of these pills is printed with the oxycodone in signature. And oxycodone is a very popular prescription pain medicine. Whoever's buying and whoever's getting those pills may be thinking they're taking oxycodone. In reality, they're taking a synthetic form of this of, a, of an opiate called fentanyl. Investigators were able to arrest the suspect. He was arraigned and given a $500,000 bond. You can't see the dude don't have any sleep, man. This is a terrible life. The fellow don't have any sleep. You can't see his eyes. It's dark. You can't sleep at night because, yeah, it's a terrible business to get involved with, man. Okay? Let's get to the big story right now. Investigators looking into... Happened near the Palm Beach County Park, Lantana Airport. WPTV's Derek Lowe there right now. Derek, we don't know yet what caused this plane to go down, right? Two people. Not yet, Mike. Investigators with the NTSB, they've been here. Not yet, Mike. Not yet, Michael. We just met you with me, girl in jail, 18,000 peel. And now you switch to the studio. Not yet, Mike, but we, 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 we know two people are no more. I right, go ahead, Derek. All morning trying to take pictures and comb through of what's left of this just completely mangled and destroyed plane. You see it there behind me, just about a thousand feet from the runway here at the Palm Beach County Park in Lantana Airport. Right now, investigators, they are not releasing the names of those two people we know have now died in this horrific plane crash. We were able to identify the tail number on 
on the plane, and after putting it into Flight Aware, flight records show that it had flown from Williston, Florida, after taking off at around 7.23 p.m. last night. Flight Aware shows the plane that's registered to Diamond Aircraft Sales, LLC, initially started its journey in Henderson City, Kentucky, yesterday morning at around 11 a.m. Flight Aware shows the plane stopped in Harris County, Georgia, on its way down to Williston before taking off again towards the Lantana Airport later in the evening, again around 7.23 last night. According to Flight Aware, the plane is a single-engine Diamond Star and was scheduled to land here at around 9.24 last night. Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. They were called to the scene here for reports of a plane on fire just minutes later at 926. And uh, right now, both occupants, they were pronounced dead at the scene. Oh, there you go. All right. The, a lot of people want to know more. The plane crashes. Crazy. All right. Okay. It happened on a United flight from L.A. to Boston. Federal prosecutors say 45 minutes before landing, a male passenger attempted to open an exit door between first class and coach. When flight attendants confronted the man, he allegedly tried to stab one of them in the neck with a broken spoon. Fellow passengers tackled and subdued the passenger until the plane landed in Boston. 33-year-old Francisco Torres tonight being held on federal charges. Meanwhile, smoke and panic Panic on Southwest Flight 3923 Sunday. The 737 hit by birds as it took off from Havana, Cuba, headed for Fort Lauderdale. The engine exploded and on fire. Terrified passengers donned oxygen masks as the crew circled back, making an emergency landing in Havana. Smoke started coming into the cabin, and they just had to stay in your seats and we had to start breathing. Bird strikes are common, but rarely cause serious damage. The oh, miracle on the Hudson. Strike, man. I couldn't be a bird strike. Okay. This dude's shirt right there. Shaman Shorties. Connecting what? the Whatever that was. But that has nothing to do with birds, man. You know, and uh, that's not what that is. 55-year-old Dana, Dana, Dana Hyde of Maryland was killed as the Bombardier Challenger plane hit severe turbulence. The plane flying from New Hampshire to Virginia, making an emergency landing in Connecticut. The NTSB says the pilots were dealing with a trim issue at the time, suggesting they may have hit clear air turbulence in a jet stream moving 50 to 100 miles an hour faster than normal. Clear air turbulence is not something that radar shows, so pilots are unable to uh, see it in advance. Every year, passengers and crew members suffer head lacerations, broken bones, and bruises in severe turbulence. This is exactly why we tell you to wear your seatbelt, because if you're not wearing your seatbelt when severe turbulence like this happens, it can actually be deadly. The incidents are rare, but they come as the FAA prepares for an aviation safety summit next week. Against the ley line, they don't want to see it. Once you see those commercial plane fall off the sky and everybody in there no more, they'll say, oh, well, that's a mechanical issue and stuff. Hey, Biden, come out there, say something. Oh, well, you know, there was a couple of kids in there and uh, they were going somewhere to some uh, uh, secret island. Well, no, I mean, uh, uh, so uh, the, the, the bank collapse and stuff and that the pilot also uh, collapsed in the air and... Uh, those uh those 13 and 12 year old girls and 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 stuff and uh, Kamala Harris you you want to go ahead and say a few stuff in that in, in my place and, uh, no I don't want to say anything it's, okay then well do we have another shipment coming you know make sure those 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 this time they don't take the airplane they take the boat Zaz oh of course I can say this word all right there you go the last video was headed toward Republic Airport in Farmingdale. Tonight, officials looking into what caused it to go down. News 4's Adam Harding has the very latest, including how this might impact LIRR service, Adam? 
And Pat, we just got an update within the last 10 minutes from Suffolk investigators here. Behind us, this still remains a very active investigation. The flashing lights, the yellow crime scene tape is still up right now. The police tape keeping everybody away. Off in the distance there, that is the tail of that small plane just off that embankment there. Sources tonight telling us that one person is dead, two also seriously injured. I want to show you what it looked like at around 3 o'clock this afternoon. You can see the fireball that was a result of this deadly crash here. This plane, we understand, had just taken taken off from Republic Airport, was making its way back, and when at some point something went wrong, the plane went down not far from the airport. Again, sources tonight telling us that one person is dead. At least two others were injured. We know there were three people on board, according to the FAA. They tell us that this was a single-engine Piper PA-28 plane that not crashed while it was on its approach back to Republic Airport here in the Farmingdale area in Suffolk County. This was around 3 o'clock this afternoon. At this point, we're still working to learn what what happened in the air and the identity of the victim who did not survive in this, but nearby radio traffic shows the frantic moments as those in the area rush to try to help. All right. That's what happened. Yep. So. Let me see how long we are into this thing. Two hours. Okay. Beloved, that's what it is. And the bank their stuff collapse and this place is done it's only going to get worse of course they never going to admit that they're just going to tell the the people oh oh everything's done all right fine uh the, what, 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 what about that chris rock man we, we need to yo chris rock just make a video answer here we need to talk about that man leave your money in the bank Let's talk about Chris Rock for a second now, man. Okay, you know what? The reason why those things are happening because the vibration of the nation is high. Because we are fasting, we are praying, and there are certain things we are doing a lot of meditation. Beloved, meditation, 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 meditation. Meditate, 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 meditate. Five minutes a day. For seven days, each day add another minute a day. Five minutes today, six minutes tomorrow, seven minutes the following day, and then continuously. Just do that, okay? Empty, just let your talk. Oh boy. It's already 7.30. Oh, I got to get this thing going. I got a class at 8.30, another hour. So, every five minutes, clear your mind. Just let your mind clear. Observe your thoughts. See what kind of things that are coming. Are they good? Are they bad? Let them. Do Spend a week. Just watch your thoughts. What kind of stuff you are thinking? And after that, the following week, stop those unwanted thoughts, those unpleasant thoughts, those thoughts that don't. They, they want you they won't do you any good meditation brethren okay this is the year of production this is the year we produce we get things together this is the year of self meditation well self medication but self meditation okay beloved i say fast we repent repeat may the king reign forever study to should i self approve galatians 6 verse 7 remember whatever that you did that's what you're going to get. The system, whatever you get what's what you put in. The reason all those things are happening because of the things that you've done in the past and you lie about it, okay? There'll be no Jacob's trouble. Be at peace. This is Esau's trouble. I'll see you folks whenever the mighty one say so. Selah, so be it.